In this video, we're looking at how to configure LDAP authentication on our access server. We have a Windows server, a domain controller on our network that we want to use as the identity provider. Uh, our access server and Windows server, they're both in the same location. So before we start, I'm going to go back to my server. There are a few pieces of information that I need. Uh, first, I'm going to run a DS query here uh, to uh, look at the users. And as you can see, I have already created a user LDAP underscore admin uh, for the purpose of this um, demo. So I'm going to copy this information and know that somewhere so I can come back to it later. The next thing I need to get the IP address of uh, this server. So um, here we go. We got the IP address here. Again, I'm going to make note of this IP address here. And lastly, I'm going to check my uh, LDAP connectivity and uh, Authentication. So I'm going to run the LDAP.exe here and let's go ahead uh, connect to the server. Uh, this is the IP address of the server. The port is here. I don't have SSL enabled, but if you do, check that box and the connection is up. And let's look at the binding. I'm going to type the um, password for the LDAP underscore admin. Click OK. And here we go. So everything checks out. Now let's head back to our um, admin user interface of our access server. So go ahead, expand authentication, and uh, we're going to go to LDAP. But before I go there, I click on settings. As you can see, local is selected. LDAP is disabled. So going to LDAP, uh, first thing, we want to toggle the switch to enable our LDAP authentication. Now, again, if you're using SSL to connect, you want to toggle the switch to yes. For the purpose of this demo, I do not have SSL enabled. Now, if the accounts are case sensitive, you toggle the switch to yes. Then you're going to type the information for your LDAP server. This is where I got that IP address. So I'm going to type that IP address here. And if you have a secondary LDAP server, you're going to um, type the information here. Now, we don't do uh, anonymously binding here. So I'm going to toggle the switch that use uh, credentials. And if you remember, I copied the um, bind the end information uh, when I ran the DS query on the server. So I'm going to copy and paste that here. And then here we go. That's our user LDAP underscore admin. And uh, we're going to type the password for the user here. Let me go ahead and type it. And then for the base DN is basically uh, when you look at the bind DN, everything after the username. So I'm going to copy that and uh, paste it down here. Now, for the username um, attribute uh, in my environment is uh, a Sam account name. Now, if you want to find out about the username attribute, you can go back to your server and go to um, Active Directory Users and Computers. Let me go ahead and open it. Can the user account and go to Properties, then look at the Attribute Editor. And if you scroll down, uh, here we go. You can see Sam account name is the attribute for the username. Another way to do it is through the PowerShell. So let me go ahead and open uh, Windows PowerShell here. Here we go. And then uh, we're going to type uh, this command, uh, get dash add user, uh, get dash add user uh, space dash identity, and then the username, which is LDAP underscore admin. And once you hit enter, you're going to see uh, the attributes here. So same account name, again, is the username attribute here. So that's how you can find out what's your um, username attribute. And then uh, for the LDAP filter, I don't have anything here, but if you do have any uh, filters that you're using, you want to add it here, click on Save Settings and Update Running Server. And everything is updated, our LDAP uh, is available. Now, if I want to change my default authentication system, here I can check LDAP and scroll down again, click on Save Settings and Update Running Server. So now it's time to test our uh, configuration. Now I'm going to go back to my server here. And under Active Directory, for the users, as you can see, I have a user here. Uh, Jimmy is the username. So we're going to try to connect with uh, Jimmy's account to our access server. So let's go back to our admin UI. This is the IP address we will need to connect. Let's look at the user management. And as you can see, there is only one user, Ella, here. So. I'm going to bring the connect app, click on the plus sign, and we're going to type the IP address of our access server here. Go ahead, type that, and then click on next. Now, you type the username and password. Uh, let me type that. 
And if you have the auto login enabled, uh, you're going to check these two boxes if you want to import the auto login profile. I don't have it, so I'm just going to click on import. And as you can see, the profile is imported in my Connect app. We're going to go ahead connect, type the password, and click OK, and we should get connected. Here we go. So we're connected with Jimmy. We use our Active Directory as identity provider to connect to our access server. Let me go ahead and disconnect this, and if I refresh this page here, you're going to see that Jimmy's account is added automatically to my access server. One last thing I'm going to add here, even though Jimmy's account is added here, if I go to more settings, you can see the authentication method for this user is LDAP, which is our default authentication method for access server. Uh, so it means that everything is being uh, managed through the Active Directory. So if I go back to my Active Directory and disable uh, Jimmy's account, I shouldn't be able to access the access server. So here we go. I'm going to toggle the switch, asking for the password, and then click OK. Here we go. And authentication failed. So I won't be able to access the access server uh, since the account is being disabled on my Active Directory. So this was a quick overview of how to configure LDAP on the access server. Thank you very much.